I hope everything is working as expected. Um, okay, let's see if folks are joining in. All right. Um, if you are in, just give a shout out in the chat. Um, just say hi, hello, how are you? Something like that. We'll get started in next two minutes or maybe five minutes. Okay. Um, yes, Sudhir. I see you uh, have replied. Hope you are doing well. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Okay, by the time Sudhir replies, um, let me introduce myself. Hello all, this is Mani and I've been on YouTube on and off for over a year and this is my first stream. So if you see any hiccups or anything please let me know in the chat i'll get that uh, fixed and hope everything is uh, audio is clear video is coming uh, along with the audio at the right time and hope you can like uh, listen to me properly if not please let me know in the chat again and thanks for joining so we will get started on the stream i'll start uh, introducing with myself so yeah mm, so there is asking about uh, in terms of pay uh, which is better data engineering or machine learning we will take that question um, uh, later into our discussion because it is the important question of the hour and i'll try to explain uh, according to my uh, experiences and uh, what i've seen uh, in my career and in my peers yeah thank you um, somebody wished best of luck minno labs uh, thank you very much. Hey, hi. Hi, Mukul. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah, let's get started. So I work as a data engineer. It's been uh, more than four years that I'm uh, doing this. And in the last four years, I've seen uh, like at least two major uh, trends and shifts that happen in the industry. And somehow I am compelled and motivated to talk about it and you know engage uh, with audience who are in the track and want to like um, learn or discuss about um, those stuff um, be it on data engineering be it where the field is heading what are the roles and responsibilities skill levels um, and uh, anything cool that is coming up in the data engineering field I'm really uh, you know um, excited to talk about and slowly I'm learning uh, you know few things here and there um, on a like monthly basis I'll not I've not say daily basis because obviously um, I'm not able to do it at this point but yeah uh, on monthly basis and I'm exploring one or the other tool um, and uh, I'm really getting a kick off it, uh, out of it so I just want to share a few thoughts on where the industry is headed and um, along those lines also i do some uh, sort of mentorship i would not say like full-fledged mentorship but i do uh, you know um, have folks you know um, uh, reach out on uh, twitter maybe sometimes on linkedin uh, sometimes you know through other personal private channels 
and ask about what is data engineering and how do i like you know uh, become a data engineer or what are skills that are required and all of this so through all of those discussions i kind of you know established a pattern on what um um uh, an aspiring data engineer would uh, require on a day to day basis to perform their uh, jobs as well as you know to become a uh, very competent data engineer themselves so that is one of the uh, like main uh, reason why i wanted to do the streams because i can get the live feedback directly from the participants as well as you know to uh, give uh, to answer the question or uh, you know a piece of my knowledge to them at the same point um, yeah uh, for you know continued mentorship there would be other channels that i would recommend to go i'll uh, link all of those resources down below in the in this video uh, later uh, at later some point right yeah so that's my intro and uh, what i want to do here um, right now um, what i would like to do is i just want to go about um, what is data engineering actually even before we think about what do we uh, how do we become a data engineer and uh, you know uh, what are the skills that are required i just want to like uh, briefly go through what is data engineering is it new is it the you know next best thing that is going to happen in the whole uh, industry or uh, why there is a lot of you know new found uh, you know enthusiasm about this field earlier there were you know big names like machine learning deep learning uh, ai ml and people uh, i mean um, again uh, with the chat gpt and uh, llms and other uh, you know modern tech that we seen in the last uh, few months um, so there is a new found interest in the, uh, like uh, data science machine learning and ai at this point and um, along with this we are seeing a lot of interest in how uh, data is managed uh, you know served and how the business are leveraging so this is where the um, data engineering comes into picture it is not new by any uh, measure um one uh, you know really good example i would like to give is the data warehousing right data warehousing existed uh, since um, i believe it's from the 80s um, correct me if i'm wrong so basically what uh, data engineering or uh, data warehousing does is it kind of collects the data uh, you know and stores it in a large scale data storage systems uh, what do i mean by that large scale data systems right these are archival storage systems and businesses want to use the data that is incoming uh, into our databases or transactions that are happening in real time into a large storage like system where they would use the data later for analysis to improve the business and to target uh, better customers or better you know products to for their customers so this is very important for any Uh, company to improve their business as well as to improve the products and services that they are offering to the uh, clients or customers right uh, when it comes to uh, you know uh, data engineering how different is it or how similar is it right so uh, we had um, something called as big data or big data revolution right where around 2008 google came up with a paper called map reduce where it showed the world that we can you know build a large scale data processing system just on uh, you know commodity or cheap servers connected over a network through a framework called mapreduce this is a distributed computing framework so after which uh, it kind of changed the industry trajectory a lot like whatever we are seeing right now the tools like spark or even um, you know modern uh, data warehousing tools or data warehouses beat um uh, up, uh, uh beat snowflake beat um uh, bigquery or any other you know data processing or data warehousing systems are par, um are because of the uh, you know the paper or um or whatever happened around uh, the time when google launched that paper so it kind of shaped the uh, you know course of the industry forever so uh, later at some point um the industry uh you know kind of you know got together and launched the suite of open source tools called hadoop ecosystem tools basically it had a storage layer it had a computing you know engine it had you know uh, several tools for machine learning data science and uh, just you know uh, plain transformations as well like hive uh, mahout pig and spark basically notably so 
when um, all of this were happening right um, people started you know jumping on that uh, it became evident that um, big data tools are here to stay and the uh, prior to that there were a lot of proprietary tools for data storage and uh, analysis this was one costly and two uh, you know very hard to set up as well as you know maintain uh, down the line and um, if anybody had uh, has a lot of experience you know um, in setting up proprietary software it is always you know uh, like a headache with licenses as well so when big data you know revolution happened right all of this uh, tools uh, you know kind of got popular because uh, amazon uh, facebook google and yahoo all of these you know hot silicon valley startups were able to process petabyte amount of uh, petabyte uh, scale data sets very easily uh, relatively easily compared to the existing tools and they got really um, you know um, uh, stupendous value out of it so that was the reason why uh, people uh, started using it as soon as they used it they kind of you know got to um, like understand uh, like uh, the limitations of those systems one being the major drawback being for those systems is the maintenance we uh, even though they guaranteed the uh, like re- um, these systems are capable of uh, like working with very large amounts of data there is always that maintenance aspect and uh, you know not so very much um, like um, um, uh, not so very much you know um, uh, uh, advantage when it comes to like dealing with the infrastructure issues or uh, the um, uh, the scaling issues that these tools brought in so around uh, 2010 cloud was uh, gaining a lot of traction and all the big data tools were offered as services on cloud so this is where the real magic happened uh, or the watershed movement uh, happened all of the uh, things that we do in data engineering uh, these days are uh, you know a resultant of the cloud as well as the open source uh, revolution that happened in data engineering if we take a moment back the open source revolution also happened in software engineering as well um, you know prior to it so basically the um, you know um, 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 open source softwares for building websites you know scaling them distributed systems and uh, you know uh, devops tools observability kubernetes all of them came along um, you know one after the other in a, a different timeline as the data in, uh, data processing systems as well so uh, the open source tools plus cloud is one of the major winners in the uh, modern data ecosystem and once we uh, figured out how um, the cloud service providers are going to um, convert every um, like popular tool in data engineering into a service they uh, started offering them as service and any company with reasonable data be it a small company or be it very large enterprise could use that those tools in their uh, you know companies to leverage their data so this has become a norm now and people started uh, looking into much more you know detailed uh, you know uh, sophisticated tools to leverage the data and manage the data as well so we will take uh, a minute here and then just go through the chat and any questions if you have uh, just uh, leave it in the chat i'll be answering them or we will uh, like you know move to the next topic uh, kashish says hi yash says hi Hello. Hope you all doing good. Okay. cool yeah i see uh, no questions on the chat so let's continue so the current iteration of the industry right is heading towards productization of the open source tools and uh, some really good proprietary data warehouses as well so when spark came into uh, picture right in whole uh, data ecosystems it kind of revolutionized how fast and 
how uh, easily we could um, uh, write um, the transformation uh, logic and how fast we can you know um, get the data processed so uh, may not be in the first version of this part but uh, later when uh, spark sql was announced and other you know tools um, that are uh, other you know optimizations that are part of the spark in the upcoming versions right so it kind of you know changed the how um, like uh, the it kind of set you know bar really high in terms of how uh, what an open source can uh, tool can achieve in the amount of you know constraints they had so basically it started off as um, um, you know a processing engine on top of the hadoop ecosystem components uh, like you know hdfs as our storage and uh, spark was the processing engine on top of that uh, replacing the map uh, map reduce or any other uh, you know processing tool so right now spark is one of the most used um data processing tools or distributed computing tools available for processing large amounts of data uh, there are other warehouses like snowflake bigquery and uh, other processing engines that support this kind of you know uh, petabyte scale data set transformations and number crunching but spark arguably is one of the most uh, you know popular tools in the data uh, modern data engineering ecosystems so later the founders of spark or the creators of spark moved on to become uh, create a new company called databricks which offers the commercial version of the spark engine or uh, you know ad with addition of uh, optimizations that are specific to the runtime that is working uh, the uh, runtime of spark that is available only through databricks they have the open source tool um, called spark um, or apache spark to be specific and we can download uh, even today uh, if you have uh, you know commodity servers lying down uh, on any cloud service we can directly install that version of spark um and we will receive the updates um on uh, uh for that uh, spark version as well but these um this spark version is lacks uh, you know many optimizations that the databricks uh, version of the spark or databricks runtime what they call offers so what is this databricks uh, you know uh, runtime or databricks um version of the spark means so when the company databricks was formed they launched a saas kind of tool or software as a service kind of tool uh, called databricks which has a notebook based interface or ipython notebook interface where you will have you know code blocks for you know where you can write um, either sql queries or python or scala to read and crunch the data right and so they have used these tools to kind of uh, uh, you know further optimize and provide this uh, for the customers so this was a very huge opportunity at that time because there are like four to five different tools like pig mahout or drill so all of these were like different tools used for very specific use cases like uh, pig scripting is used for data transformations and mahout i think it is for um, uh, machine learning libraries so spark kind of consolidated all of them and brought one single query engine that kind of uh, is capable of performing any type of operations on given data uh, even you know large scales of data so that's what spark brought in and databricks you know further optimized those um, uh, versions of the spark to bring in their own uh, like you know proprietary version of uh you know spark with all the optimizations and you know offered it as a service on all the cloud providers right now databricks is available on aws azure and google cloud so you can you know sign up for the databricks service and you know start working with the spark you don't have to install or you don't have to worry about the infrastructure everything is taken care of within the cloud service environment so this is where the industry is currently moving on as soon as the cloud became a general norm for any uh, industry be it you know deploying web applications be it deploying any back end applications or scale uh, services uh, big data also kind of moved to cloud services and they started you know seeing much more uh, specialized tools for specialized uh, you know uh, activities to be performed on so if i have to like give
I hope everything is fine now. So what's the difference uh, between the Apache Spark or vanilla version of the Spark and Databricks, uh, you know, a runtime of Spark. So if you see here, this is the difference, uh, you know, mentioned by the uh, Databricks, uh, the creator of Spark, uh, the uh, Databricks is a company. So that develops and uh, distributes Spark. So basically, um, the uh, yeah, the differences are laid out here. The Databricks runtime, right? It is an optimized version of Spark. There are, you know, number of versions. Um, there are number of uh, optimizations like, you know, faster writes to S3. S3 is basically a storage solution offered by AWS and uh, like, you know, file bay built-in optimization for cloud uh, storage access. All of these accesses, uh, all of these, you know, optimizations are provided from by the uh, Databricks runtime, but not the Spark uh, runtime. Again, Databricks runtime is proprietary to Databricks, which also includes all of the features that are present in Apache Spark. But Apache Spark, the vanilla version of the Spark, doesn't have all the optimizations that are present in Databricks. This is how the modern data tools are, um, not just Databricks, but any tool that is in modern data ecosystem is um, you know, uh, shaping up to be. Like we have seen um, few tools like uh, uh, dpt which is a transformation tool and we have seen um, dagster which is a orchestration tool all of these tools have um, you know open source version of the tool uh, which are free to use we can deploy it on our own servers in our own cloud uh, service and again they are mm, like pretty much uh, like you know uh, can be used on their cloud which meaning they can be used as a managed service where they will provide you know much more better optimizations and you know quality of life improvements for those tools so this is where the industry is headed right now uh, the all the services are getting consolidated into one single package uh, called as a data warehouse solution or data management solutions instead of just a warehouse orchestration tool uh, schedulers you know um, all of these, you know, di uh, disjoint, you know, services that are uh, existed in the yesteryears. So currently, Databricks, uh, the creator of Spark, uh, provides a query engine, which is Apache Spark. They have their own um, file format, which is also an open source one uh, called Delta file format, which is based on uh, Parquet, which is also uh, an open source file format. The next one is they also provide unity cataloging so once you have the data in your warehouse right you want to maintain a record of uh, that data and you know uh, add some metadata to it where did you get the data what does this data have all of these you know information help us to find the data uh, right data within you know um, limited time so and also to uh, you know uh, catalog the automatically coming in data we want to like you know keep a track of uh, you know which data is getting where so all of these capabilities will be provided by databricks they are bringing uh, also they have uh, you know machine learning tools you know model experimentation all of those uh, services available built into Databricks itself. This is not available on Vanilla Spark. So this is where the industry is headed right now. So we are seeing a full-fledged tools, uh, you know, open source tools, you know, uh, brought in as services, and now they are being offered as full-fledged products. So yeah, I'll pause here for a minute, and if you have any questions or doubts, um, I'll you know uh, start looking through the comments. If there are any, uh, we will just get. Uh, going ahead. All right, let's get started. When we talk about data engineering, um, the the primary I know discussion is mostly about what is 
you know uh, what is the source data how do we process it who do we you know uh, like uh, end up sharing the data with right these are the like major you know three uh, questions that we uh, have to answer before we kind of bring in any um, uh, any data in, uh, into our warehouse so let's let's start uh, this way right so you have data uh, you have business that has multiple you know departments in it the first one being a sales uh, you know department uh, marketing department products uh, division and several other uh, you know uh, customer service all of these uh, you know uh, different uh, you know uh, departments right within a company all of them have, will use their own infrastructure and they will perform all the operations will be performed and recorded in those systems um mainly the data will be stored in some kind of a database be it oracle be it um uh, uh sap be it uh, you know uh, mysql there are multiple databases uh, that are you know uh, available for their uh, you know different use cases right and there will also be legacy like, systems within uh, these you know uh, departments and when a business leader or a business team wants to know uh, the efficiency of those products or they want to understand what's going on in those teams they cannot go to indi individual teams and you know get uh, you know uh, you know get to ask questions this kind of you know uh, makes one uh, you know redundant effort and you know two duplication of efforts between the teams the same team will be doing the same you know uh, answering the same questions every day and it will be like you know a lot more easier to put it you know across a standard method of communication so to do that we need to collect data from different uh, you know uh, teams and standardize the data this is where the data engineers come into picture right data engineers act as data brokers and knowledge brokers to the whole uh, you know organization or certain part of the organization right we bring in um, the data from different sources like be databases a legacy mainframe systems or saas apps like you know salesforce uh, for our crms and you know web applications or you know any backend applications and uh, several other services even you know uh, uh, sftp or you know file servers for that matter so we bring in data from all of these sources uh, that are uh, you know um, definitely not in a single format and they will have a lot of you know um, Uh, uh, like use cases for different parts of the teams under different uh, uh, you know uh, 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 under different uh, teams right so when we start to understand uh, the uh, you know um, sources now we will uh, get to know how that uh, business is performing and what is the frequency of data generation how uh, how uh, the end consumer who wants to use this data for any analysis wants to use this data so based on that we will design a pipeline where we will copy the data from the these data sources and then we will load it into something called a raw layer basically a cloud storage like aws s3 or azure storage or google file system right so once we do load that uh, data into a large uh, storage system we will uh not just you know uh, let that uh, data be used um, into um, uh, any stakeholders right we will uh, you know ask the stakeholders what is the right format uh, that is the like you know like um, data engineering 101 what is the right format that you are expecting the data to be in we cannot have any uh, like you know unnecessary data or we cannot uh, we don't want any junk uh, you know the in the data so it needs to be cleaned up you know in the right format as well as in uh, pretty much in a good shape so when we do have um, you know these kind of requirements that is coming in from the stakeholders who want to consume this data we will transform the data using tools like spark or even in data warehouses like snowflake or bigquery right once we do have the data cleaned then we will ask the feedback from the data stakeholders and you know if if needed then we can like you know maintain another you know round of changes over there so if you see that this is kind of becoming a repeated process or a pattern for any kind of data that we load in right which is true basically we want to like you know interface all the data into a data warehouse or large scale data system where we can uh, analyze operations 
Um, you can ask money, why can't we do it directly on the databases, right? We can run the same analysis queries on databases as well. In technically, we can do it, but um, truth to be told, we should not do it because databases or any operation systems, right? They are busy in serving the customers and recording the transactions that are happening. Transactions being a very minute data updates, like, you know, somebody purchased something or I know a user changed their address or they changed their email address or something like that, right? My, micro, you know, uh, data updates. If we start running, you know, large scale data analytics on those systems, which will crunch law, uh, take a lot of uh, resources on those to begin with, and it might, you know, bring the system down. Even if we are using, you know, uh, like, you know, second, uh, like a read replicas or a, any sort of, you know, um, backup strategies, it will hamper the performance of the operational system on production. So we should not do it. Not all systems support the same level of querying on uh, like source systems itself. Maybe an API source cannot use a SQL as an interface to write directly write the queries. But if we consider a data warehouse where we bring in raw data as is, we can use SQL or Python based transformations uh, using Spark or any uh, distributed computing framework or uh, normal Python uh, based processing to process the data uh, with one uh, single you know querying interface or uh, analytics interface. So these might not be available on the data sources. So this is where the data warehousing or analytics bay, uh, uh, layer is very helpful and we should have always have analytics layer or a data warehousing layer or um, a large scale analytics layer um, separate from our data sources. We should not perform the same level of analysis on the data sources. And yeah, this is one of those reasons. Support if, uh, if your uh, you know data should end up in multiple you know places like you know uh, BI reporting or dashboards. It will be you know much more uh, like um, hard to do it off of a database if especially if the data is really high in volume and if the updates are really frequent. So this is where the uh, need for data engineers and data warehousing architecture and analytics layer comes into picture. And um, certainly like, you know, catalog, um, the modern data tools like uh, Databricks, uh, Snowflake and um, other, you know, tools like, you know, DBT where uh, transformations are defined in SQL and orchestration tools. All of these come in hand to build one large scale data processing uh, platform. So this is where the modern uh, data platform currently is and we are you know, taking advantage of that for large scale data processing. I hope um, that one is clear. Um, and yeah, now uh, I think we are over half an hour, right? Um, I'll go for another five to 10 minutes. Um, please note down your, uh, like, uh, let me know if you have any questions on the chat. I'll be happy to have, you know, uh, discuss them and um, yeah. Also, um, share your feedback. Uh, this is, since this is my first stream, I really want to know how uh, it went and you know, improve on that in the later uh, you know, section. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay, um, next up I want to discuss what kind of a role is, um, you know, uh, does a data engineering role offer? What kind of, you know, things does a uh, data engineering role offer? Data engineering role basically offers, you know, wide variety of, you know, dealing with uh, different ki kinds of data, uh, basically, be it databases, like different types of databases, um, different kinds of databases like NoSQL, um, key value stores, all of these. So we want to interface all of this data into our data uh, warehousing uh, tools. And we uh, get to deal with a lot of you know, stakeholders who are either sending the data or consuming the data from us. So this is kind of an interface, uh, interfacing role where 
you uh, act as a broker uh, data broker or knowledge broker between different teams within the same organization or different departments within the same company and you facilitate a large scale data analytics um, you know you build a platform uh, to perform um, large scale analytics for the company as well as you kind of you know help um, build data sets uh, that will be leveraged by the business teams or uh, any uh, any team that is looking for uh, that kind of specific you know uh, sliced and diced data sets right and you'll also uh, be part of uh, you know as a precursor to machine learning teams or data science teams or ai teams where they expect the data into a certain format it's not that they uh, they can't do by themselves but if they everybody start uh, started doing their own thing uh, then the consistency of the data is lost and nobody can really say you know um, you know which part of the data that they are looking at is the correct uh, you know uh, one or which is the most consistent one so to avoid all of these confusions the data engineering role was present earlier to data engineering you know boom that we see in the last few year couple of years there was a, lo- a lot of you know demand for data science and um, ai machine learning uh, ones all of those um, uh, like projects went uh, well uh, in the beginning where there was you know clean data of sort and they kind of quickly fall short of their expectations because there was no uh, clean data available or data scientists or uh, machine learning engineers everybody started to kind of uh, you know uh, clean uh, spend most of their time even 90 to uh, 95% of the time just cleaning the data which is kind of you know really uh, the point where data engineers come in so they uh, like take the effort of maintaining the consistency of the data and the quality of the data in um, agreed format across the whole organization uh, in a one system that is the data warehouse or data serving a platform right so now um, and data engineer uh, now coming back to the original discussion right the data engineering also offers us to uh, be part of any project that is data driven right so be it an application where you want to ingest some dashboards for hundreds of thousands of customers or let's say for example spotify does a uh, yearly uh, wrap for uh, their paid or uh, non paid customers for nearly around what 300 million customers at this point or even maybe more um, so they will you know around say uh, give stats like you know uh, you listen to you know this artist you know uh, frequently in uh, year of 2023 or 2022 you had you know uh, most listened tracks are these most listened playlists are this and you repeated this track these many times they you repeated uh, this artist these many times in a streak so all of these uh, analytics you know uh, makes the customers use that platform more i know for a fact that people adore spotify and they choose uh, you know that over other mu- music streaming services uh, because of these kind of you know uh, stats that are being inbuilt into that particular application so any application that wants to be data driven and any uh, like a part of the organization that uh, want to use this kind of you know data at large scale and process the data at large scale they need some kind of a platform to have a consistent data coming in all the times right be it machine learning be it bi uh, visualizations or dashboarding teams be it you know business reporting teams or be it you know uh, getting a unified view across the companies you know um, uh, processes and business you know impact so all of these can be um, uh, like in theory all of this can be uh, obtained from one single place uh, e- uh, that is our data um, platform or data engineering platform so this is where uh, data engineering role and data engineers you know stand at this point and um earlier when the data engineering came into picture we ca- everybody kind of you know thought that um uh, you know with they are just you know transforming the data from one place to another place applying few transformations and that's it right but the focus has changed right now everybody started to realize the importance of the clean data clean you know uh, uh, scalable architectures and uh, you know scalable uh, you know solutions that could serve different parts of the company at the same time without having uh, you know duplicate efforts all around you know uh, that has uh, that will be done all around the company now what uh, they are doing is they are 
uh, getting data engineering teams part of every discussions wherever the data is needed so this is where the data engineering role is uh, you know going further so to um, now to answer the uh, question that sudhir has 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 posted in the chat earlier uh, which one is better uh, in terms of pay i think it largely depends on what kind of company you are targeting um second thing is the level of you know data maturity that the company has and the third thing is the level of skill set um, you know that the person has like that is one of the uh, most uh, this one on a general um, note i believe the any ai or ml activities that is going across any company right they should have a clean data right or a data that is serviceable to them to apply any kind of you know modeling or you know uh, perform any um you know uh, like machine learning or uh, ai or ml right so it is not uh, like you know data engineering exists can ex uh, you know exist in a vacuum that is you know separate from uh, machine learning but they both you know work hand in hand uh, in in practical uh, in practicality so the question being that um which uh, you know both of these roles are very important to a company because um, everybody wants to like optimize their business the focus being uh, that what kind of company you are looking to for example if you are working uh, at least i can give you an example in uh, india's uh, tech scene like basically uh, if you are joining a service based company where they you know offer data engineering services to other client right it's always uh, there is always upper limit where you can you know go from uh, x um, x salary to y salary within x um uh, x uh, you know uh, years right because they are you know uh, actually serving the client and uh, you know the client will provide them uh, their uh, you know uh, like uh, billing uh, to that particular person if you think about that in uh, product development uh, or any companies that develop their own products and you know cater to uh, the customers right they are a bit different they use data engineering teams as an extension to their application development team or the machine learning team right there you get a slightly you know wider uh, scope of things to work on and generally what i uh, personally have uh, seen over the last years the pay would be better because the kind of you know problems that you are going to work on will hugely vary and it can be exciting as well if you are uh, you know into that but yeah uh, to answer your question uh, it dep- it really depends because at one point you know around 2018 19 the uh, boom for you know machine learning engineers or uh, ai ml uh, you know um, folks uh, was really high the pay was certainly really high and after 2020 the kind of you know um, um, pay got you know little uh, stagnated um, for the most part uh, not uh, exactly uh, you know uh, fixed at one uh, uh, at one level but uh, you know uh, kind of got stagnated and now uh, you know data engineering got really good traction people you know started uh, requiring more data engineers and you know establishing data standards across their company now they are you know stra- trying to get uh, you know data practices everything you know done uh, be it regulatory compliance be it you know uh, for uh, you know large scale analysis all of these things right now they are uh, doing it so data engineering is uh, got really good traction now again uh, the focus has shifted uh, to back to uh, machine learning team uh, machine learning uh, this one uh, Uh, machine learning field because you know uh, chat gpt ai ml you know llms agents what not so yeah uh, i think in my experience um, as far as i've seen uh, my, uh, like uh, data engineers in a pretty good company who has a good track record of um, uh, getting the data utilized um, you know can pay you uh, Uh, as with uh, on par with uh, machine learning engineers or ai ml people um and uh, actually the skill sets you know vary uh, uh, if you take out the basic skill sets right the skill sets you know vary largely for data engineers as well as machine learning if you are okay with uh, you know going uh, any of the thing you are not going wrong anywhere so that's there
okay uh, the next question is um, can you suggest course from for hadoop ecosystem okay why are you not uploading videos constantly because i have few personal commitments and i had few scripts done and yeah uh, i kind of uh, got carried away i uh, could not upload so that's the reason why i'm doing the live stream so that i will not back out of this and you know uh, share uh, my thoughts as and when you know um, on the live stream you know as live as lively as possible and yeah mm, I- i'll try to upload more videos on a few technical uh, content you know like um, maybe what are uh, processing engines what is distributed computing do uh, what does distribute that computing frameworks like spark has to do with data processing systems and uh, some you know topics that i am really interested where i got few questions uh, from um, learners or you know a few people who um, like you know uh, interacted with me i got few good topics there i'll you know try to post few videos on that yeah can you suggest any course for hadoop ecosystem so i'll explain why you need to learn hadoop ecosystem um um so basically when the spark came into picture even uh, till today the spark core architecture is based on the distributed computing architecture that is popularized in uh, when the hadoop ecosystem came into light so uh, it has been optimized over the years but the core architecture you know client uh, sorry no um, driver node uh, worker architecture still uh, stays relevant even on the databricks uh, version of the spark so you need to know the uh, internals of um, hadoop ecosystem to understand spark better and you know to understand the internals of spark most of the internals of uh, hadoop um, you know map reduce are uh, relatable to spark and if you learn that it will be useful in um, learning the uh, spark as well now coming to like any course i think it varsity um, um, has a pretty good course on hadoop um, i'll uh, try to share the link in the comments of this video or uh, through twitter if you are not following me uh, please uh, do follow um, like um, i will be sharing resources on that as well so yeah hadoop ecosystem is one of the like you know uh, core uh, like understandings if not the tools understandings of all the modern data architectures at least you know spark and you know um, in understanding spark and um, the uh, big data processing tools so yeah ml ops or llm ops are related to data engineering that's a good question so um, as far as my you know knowledge goes for ml ops right what we do is we uh, like um, get the data set start training the data set we get the results from uh, the training we put the results into a persistent storage or a, uh, somewhere uh, in the storage and we start to tune the model and you know start experimenting on it once you have the required accuracy or required you know parameters uh, um then you will start you know pro- uh, productionizing the model and even productionizing you will get the feedback from the model how well it is performing based on our um, you know uh, like criteria right and every time you uh, like start um training the model and uh, on a data set and you know watching it based on uh, how you receive the data as well as how you uh, like uh, you know uh, train the data all of this will be stored uh, as model artifacts or model uh, you know pam Uh, model artifacts right so these kind of you know uh, stuff is uh, draws a lot of parallels in data engineering as well we bring in the data we transform the data we store the data set and we serve the data so this is similar to what we do in data engineering but uh, exactly not same uh, there are you know uh, like very specific you know things that happens in ml but we can draw a lot of you know parallels between these two so this is how uh, like those two can be uh, like seen under one light but they can be very a uh, lot different you know uh, within their you, you know specific use cases that uh, they are going to solve yeah um, i think they are not related but they are uh, they we can draw parallels between those two llm ops i think it is specific to llms or large language models where we see that are used in um, chat gpt or any chatbots um, that have uh, we have seen uh, recently honestly i have not been through any of them yet i just want to like you know uh, let the hype die down 
and you know maybe peacefully go through the you know good technical courses uh, or content over that uh, not just you know some um, fluffy bs that is thrown around uh, you know in the name of the llms or anything like that so yeah i think uh, we have done over 40 minutes this is this has been good i really enjoyed this one uh, if you have any questions or any feedback for me please leave in the comments below i would re- that would really i would really appreciate that and uh, yeah let me know if you have um, anything or else we can close the stream and we will meet maybe in the next week or uh, the week after that Cool. Thanks, Kashish. All right. Um, hope you all had a great time. Um, and I certainly enjoyed it. Um, I would I definitely like to do it again. Uh, and hopefully uh, you know uh, i'll do it again uh, yeah uh, thanks kashish thanks for your feedback um, and yeah hope you um, all have a great day and great night um, and see you all again in the near future um, if you have any uh, like feedback or uh, if you want to reach out to me anything i'll uh, link all of the um, um, my socials in the description below as well as uh like um, any channel that you could reach out to me i'll link all of them in the comments uh, in the description below so bye bye for now have a great day